All right, I'm back at it. Back at finishing the projects that I started that I should have never taken on, but did anyway, and so now I've got to complete. It's probably the most common question I get. If you don't like something or you're not gonna keep something, then why are you doing all this? I said, well, that's a darn good question I'm asking myself as well. And I think the answer is right now is, you know, I've gotten quite a few projects to 75% completion. I wanna get them to 100% and then make a decision. Do I keep or do I move on? Uh, and because I've got a, a, a 718 GT4 coming, uh, in July, uh, it's escalating the timetable here. The original plan was to, you know, enjoy these cars, sell them later this year, get a GD4 next year. I got an allocation, and so I'm taking it. Uh, and so, sorry, my eyes keep going over to the black tile that's not clean from the uh, drywall dust. I got to get that fixed. Sorry, we got a little sidetracked there. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to finish the M5 here today. I don't care if I got to stay here till 3 a.m. Uh, the intake is going in. It's about 50 steps, uh, some cutting, some modifying. It's part of the reason why I left this uh, for the end. Uh, I didn't plan on leaving it this long. Uh, but the big epiphany in life is that I, I got to stop doing this where I buy a car, I buy everything, and I buy another car, I buy everything. I don't enjoy the chase then. You know, part of the fun is order something, wait for it, do some more research, anticipate. When it shows up, then I can put in the effort instead of having a line of parts on the top of my cabinets, which drives me crazy. So I don't want to say I'm not going to do that again, but I'm going to do my best to not do that again. And uh, the thing that's always held me back, the discipline that's always held me back, was I didn't have enough money or I didn't have enough justification uh, to do it this way. And now I've got this business justification to go nutty and buy 45 parts for an M5 that I'm not even sure that I love. Uh, and I don't want to do that anymore. So um, at least not for a while. We'll see if I work my way back to that and then have another come to Jesus meeting. But anyway, uh, we're going to work on the, on the intake, get this done. Bryce is going to help me. Uh, and um, we're in the middle of a bunch of big, bigger projects with the store. Uh, but I want to get this done, get this complete, see what it looks like, drive the car a little bit, take some photos. But it's officially for sale as of right this second. Uh, I'm selling it for 75000 uh, bucks. And so if you want it, you know, let me know. I paid fifty-seven for it. I've got $40,000 worth of stuff on the thing uh, and repairing and fixing and modifying and making it a, a, a great example of an M5. So say what you want about me asking 75 grand for it I, I bet you somebody wants it uh, so it's uh, it's turned out to be a really really nice car it just doesn't fit and what I what I need uh, and uh, Michelle we thought Michelle would drive it more often but she hates having such a nice car and then the kids messing everything up so it was an experiment that was certainly fun I really enjoyed having and I've driven it quite a bit I've probably driven this car more than any other car that I have in the last six months uh, because it is it is comfy and fun to get in uh, but it's just you know with the GT4 coming I'm, I'm probably really gonna drive it so I'm gonna sell it and that's that's that so look at this intake <laughs> so the instructions are this is very reminiscent of if you saw the M the uh, 1M uh, install video I don't think it's quite as difficult as that uh, but it's still you know the instruction manual gets to step uh, 47. So there's 47 steps, 28 pages of step-by-step uh, -step instructions. We have to do some cutting, some modifying. Uh, so that's going to take a little bit of effort to get this thing done. Um, but we reuse the, the bottom of the factory intakes. Uh, you have new filters and then you get sort of a ram air effect. Uh, but there's like special template tools that they give you uh, and all kinds of parts and pieces that we need in order to get this thing done. Uh, we also have to take off the the front bumper uh, so this is going to be a pretty significant project it's about uh what is it 11 something in the morning i'll probably be here until uh until who knows when but i'm going to get this done no matter what because i want to get it out the car's clean it's coated it's corrected it's set up the interior's clean uh, and so i want to go after we finish this i want to go take a bunch of photos do some rolling shots do a wrap-up video uh, and move on I'm, you know, I'm ready to move on and move to either, you know, keeping a couple of cars and really focusing on them because that's what I enjoy the most. So, anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you where I'm at. Another thing I got to do in the car is get uh, put some pearl on it. All right, so we're gonna follow this step by step. 
and work through this this install. So I think I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get the power cord set up and just leave the light here. Gosh, living in the woods, it's a bad deal. And last night I'm like, well, I won't I won't address the engine bay because I'm gonna be messing with it. I should have. It would have made me feel better if I'd cleaned this all up. So we got our lights set up. We got our leaves vacuumed. Let's follow the instructions. We'll clean up this after. Uh, congratulations. Da -da -da, you know that. Parts list. You know, I'm gonna go grab the iPad because I think we'll do better by seeing the photos are better on the online. Okay, step one, open the hood and remove the rubber seal covering the bolts and rivets by pulling it out. So that's the seal right here. Okay. Gosh, it feels wonderful not having crap all over my cabinets. I'm gonna battle that from now until forever. Okay, step two, remove the plastic covers Plastic side covers by removing the rubber engine seal. Why don't I just put this thing right here? How's that? How's that for fancy? Then put these. Expanding the rivets, okay. Remove the plastic side cover. So that's these. Oh. I see, so I'm gonna remove that. So the car now has I just hit 20,000 miles. 2016 competition package. Oh man, I gotta take this whole thing off? It's all one piece, isn't it? So the Corvette is coming in here tomorrow afternoon. So I'm gonna have to uh, double time it here to get this thing done. But I am not working on other than cleaning up the Alcantara I'm not touching that thing I'm done with it you know, I was having a hard time trying to figure out like I'm like I'm not enjoying this whole I got all these fancy cars and I'm not enjoying it and I was holding on to the the money part of it you know how much do I have invested in the Corvette and I don't want to lose it but it was an experiment a failed one an experiment and do I want to be you know, owning a bunch of cars and doing a bunch of car projects. And I think the lesson is absolutely, positively not. I'm just going to own the cars that I want to own. And I kind of know that intuitively. And so this M5 and the uh, Corvette was an experiment that I'm likely to repeat again but not anytime soon. It's a fun experiment to take on. Just not well suited for a person wound as tightly as me. So I contemplated just bagging the intake install and leave that for the next guy, but I'm really interested in this. I think it looks really sweet. So I'm doing this mainly just for the darn photos because I can. And this needs to come off. There's one more right here. And so I'm going back down to, and possibly selling the M3 as well. We'll see. But I'm going back down to a more manageable level of cars for a person of my, uh, my level of, ob of insanity, or level of obsession. It's hard to obsess over so many cars. You know, having a bunch of cars is much, a much better thing for someone that's suited for that. I'm not. I take things too darn seriously. And I don't think that's gonna change, so. If you learned anything from me over the years, there's one thing I'm willing to do. Let's try things, fail at it. And, tr and try something else. These things are not so pliable. This is only step two, Bryce. We're gonna count it down one step at a time. It's like, it's like taking it one day at a time, you know? 
Yeah. All right, see you tomorrow, everyone. Episode 48. Okay, pull our stripping off. Okay, step two is complete. Let's go to step three. Remove the radiator support cross brace assembly. Unscrew the bolts in two, three, four, five. Leave two braces, six and seven, bolted together. So we're gonna go two, three, four, five. So what is that, a 13? Yep. Unscrew the bolts in positions two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's four, five. So let's see, what is that? That's going to be a T30. Dang, I'm getting good, Bryce. I a regular old like, mechanic. Tackling a lot of diverse cars here. You remember where all these bolts go? Well, it just so happened to have them, Bryce. Allen key right there. Yeah, I mean, look at that. There's no brace that should run from there to there. The comp cars not have that, or is this someone just missing it? Hey, look at that. I'm missing out on some of my structural rigidity. Right. Okay, brace is out. Step four. Lift up the cross base brace assembly slightly so you can unclip. I'm already done with step four. Step five, oh boy, remove the bumper. So we're gonna go all these here, all these T30s. I'm gonna try to keep my tools. Oh, we need to do a little clip for the Sonic guys of me. Uh, while you're doing this, make sure you capture me taking some tools out so we can send it to them. We're like 10% of the way done, according to the steps. I suspect, I suspect, yeah, I, I suspect these steps don't equate to uh, the more gnarly steps. Okay, these are all little 10 millimeters. I think they're small, I think they're eights. There's like a hundred of them. probably some in the wheel well. Okay, so we got all those out. Unscrew all the bolts and screws at the top of the bottom of the bumper as shown in the arrows. Remove the screws from the wheel arches. Then pull inner fender back so you can get to the two screws holding the bumper to the fender. So there's three. One, two, three. All right, so we just have to unplug the connection. There are two bolts in here somewhere. Somewheres. Oh, up top there. There's one. That's somebody taking the walk of shame. We have the walk of shame here at HQ where this is the new the new bathroom. As everybody comes to do their thing. There's one. Oh shoot, I don't think I needed to take that one off. I got this one here. This is this one, not the one I just took off. Okay, 
So I'm going to repeat this procedure on the other side. Yeah. Unplug the side view camera, take those two off. There we go. Now what? I like this following the instructions thing. This is what people normally do. There are two steps for cars with night visions. Remove the retaining screw number one. This piece, that one right there. Okay, it's out. At least the plug connections and high pressure nozzle line from the night vision ca camera and disconnect. Remove the bumper cover straight with the aid of a second person. That's you, Bryce. First, let me get this off over here. You gotta be careful with hoses with liquid in them, man. Might spray us. <laughs> nah. That's what I said last time. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's like a clip at the very, like a little push area my side it's like it's like knurled there we go now what do I do with this uh, must be a power there we go I got that okay bumper's off there we go okay wow that thing's heavy it's the heaviest front bumper I've ever lifted up Air filter frames mount on top of the shroud in front of the radiator. He will cut two holes and mount the frames to the shroud. The dining carbon fiber snorkels screw to these frames. Okay, start by removing the air, uh, the outer air duct. Remove the two screws, unlatch the five clips, and remove the outer air duct. One here. Here. So you see these little clips, and there's ones on the bottom, and pop that out. Okay, set that aside. It's gonna be a major cleanup project of all this stuff. Install the air filter mount template by inserting the, by ins by inserting the mounting tabs into the two slots shown. Oh yeah, there's two slots, one, two. Okay, so now we have it figured out. So these two holes here, this hole and this hole, are just so you can cut all the way to the edge because we couldn't figure out how to, couldn't get this lined up. All right, so let's, let's scribe this thing then. Let's use a right angle pick. Should we drill our holes first or scribe it? I guess it doesn't matter. Eighth inch. Now, what does it look like? How do I draw this other line? Does it go here? They clearly, they clearly marked it, so I don't know how they did that. Was it this outside edge, like I was thinking? You no, know, maybe. Like, why would they cut it like that? They had to do an extra step to cut it like that. So then those go like that, I imagine. All right, so once we cut this, then it's going to have us cut off this little edge thing here that sticks up. So we're going to end up cutting this off too. So there's nothing that sticks up. I think the better way to cut this is with a darn razor blade. Maybe not. 
That's a little too thick for that. Yeah, at home. Just leave that thing here. No. It's gonna be too big. I can use a jigsaw. Just run home and get the Dremel real quick. I can run. I know where it's at. Yeah, it's in the top left cabinet. Yeah, it's in that gray box in the very top extreme left cabinet of the... Okay. All right, so while Bryce went and got our Dremel, I've got... Did a little clean up here a little bit. Gosh, I haven't used a Dremel in a long time. It's because I never have it when I need it. It's either here or it's home, but it's never where I am. And so most of the time I end up doing something stupid. I was ready to just. About to get out. I was ready to start hacking. Got my fancy prolock cord here. The reason why I want to get this car done and sold is so I can work on my air compressor and getting all my power lines all set up on this side. Let me do safety first. I'm a safety ranger now. It looks stylish. This is a job for you, Bryce. Why am I doing this? like fused back together. That's where my razor blade will come in. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay, so now I need to snip off this little piece here. Oh! Now I need a 1364 Jeez. There's nothing to hold on to. <laughs> you like that? I'm running you into the emergency room. You don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. I need that little nub off of there. <clears throat> oh, Bryce, this is when you start doing your thing. You little... start, start doing it the right way. I'm watching you slide in that This is when you start start piddling, getting it. Oh, man, not very OG spec right now. It's going to be covered up. That no, it looks good. Okay. Okay, so our holes drilled. Install the air filter frames using four or using four millimeter by ten millimeter screws and plastic washers. Four millimeter by ten millimeter, that's probably these, right? Plastic washers. So we need to heat this thing up and put this back together. Look out, Bryce, I'm getting a soldering iron. I don't have five minutes. I got no minutes. Hold that while I figure out what we do next. I can screw the other, I can screw this side in. This is one of those things, like if we did it again, it would take like eight minutes to do. Because yeah, you know exactly. We were sitting there like, why do they have it like this and that? Yeah, like why would you go out in an L? Are we hot yet? Do you want to do it? No. No. This is your this is your your skill set. I don't want to steal your thunder here. Oh boy, I'm not no professional with this. So oh boy. Hold your comments. <laughs> well, I mean, you're gonna see it's gonna be covered, but. I know, but you know, try to make it look good. Man. 
since it's not the proper way to do this, but. <laughs> the good news, good news is our pallet racking is, I thought it was gonna be a lot more, it's 15,000. So we're gonna be able to get this place in tip top, top condition. And keep my airflow maximum. I don't want to slow it down. Might get some turbulence. A little whistle. All right, we're welded. Don't break my weld. Okay. I'm gonna be very gentle. I feel like a real fabricator, Bryce. I think this gives me a, a kind of street cred. Just like white <laughs> collar fabrication. <laughs> WCF. Forty years experience, Bryce. So you gotta put on like when you go to a job and they're like, so can you weld? Like, yeah. Plastic weld. <laughs> yeah. Like let me show you, you got a soldering iron around? And be like, what? It's a white collar fabrication. Look at my hands though. This ain't no white collar, Bryce. Like, I got blood hands, I got calluses, I got Just because you're clumsy doesn't mean <laughs> Nah, get out of here. At this rate of speed, we are going to be here. This kind of white collar fabricating, we are going to be here till 2 at 3 a.m. <sighs> okay, what's next? Okay, step 16 is done. Step 17. Trim the radiator support joint as shown in figures 24 through 32. Oh boy. First, cut the front of the upper side. Scribe a line down 3 16ths of an inch from the edge. Go from the flange to, to the half round notch. Cut away the metal with aviation snips or a die grinder with a cutoff wheel. File and sand smooth. Apply touch up paint to the cuts. I'll do that. Okay, so these lines are parallel to the edge. So three quarters. Three quarters, 90 degrees. So from here, so right where that curves, it's like right here. like that there but straight not so crooked and then it goes out out there like that something like that does that look right These I can't quite get in at the right angle. So it doesn't fry down, it pushes up the metal. So I push the metal down. I need to cut this little this little wing off, right? No, I not cut it off, but at least it would take a little bit out of it. I mean, you could cut it all the way off if you want to, but they say not to. You know? They remove like, what is it, like an eighth of an inch? Oh, really? Yeah, it's like a very, you could see. See where that dip out is right there? Mm-hmm. That's that little circle. So I don't think I can cut it with this. Huge mess.
So we just have to have enough room to slide this. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna fit, no problem. No problem. Paint on there, because that's what I got. Don't do it in the garage. It's good. Good. I'm gonna wipe that off. It says to kind of loose fit this. Just as the leave, as the leave these two out. Read the instructions. I touch up. Okay, we're done with that. Reassemble the air diffuser and outer air duct. Latch the five clips and install the two screws. I really want to clean this thing off. I'm going to clean it off in the sink. That goes there. Okay, that's on. So we'll leave that. Now, is there anything that needs to go? Let's put, oh, we got to put these in. We're ready to put the whole front bumper back on, it says. Okay, what else we got? What else am I missing here, Bryce? I only took those two screws out. What else can't we put back on? We're gonna, we're gonna snap that back in, that back in. What is this? It's your little washer up here. We'll pop out okay, so those are good. That one's good. So we got to put this back in place. So that thing clips on there. Then we'll put the sides on. I think I should suck out this uh, oil cooler over here while I'm at it. Like the little handle on it? Yeah, it makes it way better. Makes it bigger. You got to put it somewhere, but. See how there's like a little locating tab here? Did you get this one in? So this one has to go like that. I don't know why front bumpers always feel like they're too much. Like it's too much to do. It's really never that bad. That's why I like the Porsche rear bumper so much. There's so many locating. Ends. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we gotta do the bottom. Want me to hold this up? Yeah, it's good. Kinda... locating pins? Yep. Is this fucking go? Yeah, yeah. You're doing it wrong. You can let go of that. <laughs> I got the other one set up on the other side. Okay. We're in. Okay. Back one in. Tells me I haven't seen the worst of this yet, though. Got it. I 
Okay, let's move the air boxes. We need to remove this. Step 22 is done. Step 23, disconnect the mass airflow sensor. Connector one, loosen the clamp, pull the boot off. Okay, so we need to really, we need to loosen this. Hate these kind of connectors. Oh, I see. There's a little. There we go. So there's a little white it's thing on the bottom side of it, though. Yep. This one's different. Different. I'm just gonna take the freaking tube off, and then we'll be able to see it. I'm skipping steps. Go. Air boxes are out. Pull up on the rear air box to release the ball joint. Air box should be able to lift out of the engine bay. Repeat steps on oh, 26. Okay, so we need to remove the bracket from figures 39 and 40. This is on the driver's side only. This bracket right here. Remove the bracket from 39 to 40 using a T15 Torx. So this bracket, okay, bracket right there. Turn the rubber bushings 90 degrees inward as shown in 41. Install dine-in bracket as shown in 42. So I'm gonna take this bracket off. Okay, find me the dine-in bracket. So this turns in like that. Install this bracket here like this. This just pushes it up out of the way. Now remove the mass airflow sensors from the mass airflow tubes using a T20. I have no how do I have no counter space in this giant counter? stayed organized for about 10 minutes. I think we still need the lower half of the box. Okay. Remove the air box head. Yeah, just as I thought. We got under cabinet lighting coming, so it'll be nice and well lit in the future. I don't know if these were called filister screws. Did you know that, Bryce? You know a guy named Phil? Okay. Oh, these filters look brand spanking new. They just had a, he just had a service done to it before I got it. Okay, now we need to clean this out. Give me that eraser. Peel off the adhesive backing paper before installing. Trim gasket as necessary. Airbox either has a hole or snorkel in the bottom. We'll need to block off that. The included kit. Clean out the lower track of the airbox. Insert adhesive gasket. See figure 45. Peel off adhesive backing paper before installing. Trim gasket as necessary. go. What do you know? This little screw doesn't fall through the cracks. OK. 
Okay, so our airbox is all cleaned out. Airbox number one anyway. Purposely made thin in order to be able to conform to the curved surface of the airbox. Install on the outside of the airbox. If your airbox already has a BMW plates, the dining plates will not be used. Give us any screws for this. Four nuts and bolts with washers. Is that what that is? Must be. Now I got a gap. I need some RTV in there, I think. I have some somewhere. There we go. So we'll seal this up. I don't think it really matters much, but we got it all sealed up nice and tidy. Tidy ish. So you still gotta do the other one, or did you get the other one done? No, I'm still gonna do the other one. Okay. <laughs> I'm just assembling some stuff over here that's. Man, I'm gonna feel like a million bucks if this actually works. Does it throw any codes or anything? Yeah. This thing takes awesome. I should have should have done this when we were at PSI. I was like, no, nah, we'll do the intake later. It's gonna be a huge project. It really wasn't that bad. I mean, we're not done yet, but. So, my awesome um, speakers for CrossFit got nixed. Still too loud? Yeah, so what I'm doing, I'm taking. Like four or six small little satellite ones? I'm taking for the clips that we had in the old gym. I have them still. I bought a Yamaha receiver, you know, a Yamaha Music Cast stereo receiver that has AB out. Mm -hmm. And just doing that. And then I'm going to take this Velodyne sub and take it over there so we have a little sub. Yeah. That way it won't. Because when I put them on the other wall, like you can hear it, now you can hear it from the next neighborhood. It carries. Oh. So the bass is good now, but now we have, you know, now we have high frequencies traveling for miles. A little lane too. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have some concert speakers for whenever I wanna hold. Decided to pick up a passion of um, DJing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, D I'm DJ ready. DJ Matty Matt. You like Mark uh, Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark, Matty Matt. Man, this is. This is really pretty sweet. This this intake. So you have a nice tight air seal here. I'm getting air from down low. You got the uppers all done? Yeah, I'm checking through here. Yeah, I got scared with the the 1M intake. The 1M is still nightmares. Yeah, this was not bad at all. I mean, we still have to get it fit in there, but I think we're going to be okay. You getting fired up on Super Tuesday, Bryce? Can't wait. No, <laughs> it was yesterday. Can't wait. <laughs> That's how excited I was for it. Yeah, I see that. Not as excited as me. Okay, all our strippings in says in there, don't put in, leave the seventh screw, so the one, would leave this screw out, apparently, that's right above, so it's that one there, it says to leave out. Well, that's what those little, little plastic washers are for, for, for this part right here. Oh, there are two uh, filters in these. 
There's the charcoal filter and the regular. Does that mean you're down reading your filtration? For mm. some air? I don't think you need that much filtration. Upgrading my HPs. I'm already starting to feel so much more at ease. I want to be able to work on projects and just be just be comfy, comfortable with it instead of feeling some need to do it. Did you put it cool as a cucumber? Yeah. People are like, you really look stressed out in this one. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was doing Kyle suspension, man. It was a... I was... That's feeling great. I'm like, well, you know, I'm like, hey, you want to do, uh, you want to do the front, you want to do your front thing, thingers, whatever they're called. He's like, nah, I'm done. No, the front little mud flap thingies, yeah. Oh. I'm like, let's keep going. This is great. Normally, I've been like trying to get the heck out of here because I got a race to do something else. Cool as a cucumber, Bryce. Do you ever think you'd hear me say that? Well, I am. Except for on the things that I want you to do, then I'm freaking out. How come we don't have it done, Mike? How come it's not done yet? Whatever we're supposed to have done. Why am I not putting this last little screw in? I don't know. I didn't read that part. What is that? It's a dining sock for you. I'm going to be like an NBA player. I don't think so. What is this for? Where did this come from? I look like Russell Westbrook right now. I look cool with that? Like Russell, oh, I gotta get it. Gotta get it straight. It's a little tight. It's a little hot. I'm already starting to sweat with this thing on. What is this for? Where did this come from? Why do we have this? I don't say anything here about no socks. <laughs> Is it, a, is it a Corvette thing? No, Corvettes only come with white socks. I don't know what this is all about, people. It was like a little package, a little baggy, sitting over there. Oh well. Step 39. Make sure the air box or insulation of the air box is reverse disassembly. A couple of hints making it easier. Make sure the lower box is sliding into the track on the front boot. So make sure this hose is out of the way because it can cause misalignment. Install the hose clamp shown. Good thing we've got a whole drawer of hose clamps, so. Let's put these in then. Which side is which? Oh my. Way to go, Bryce. Ah, no! We got 50 more of them. Yeah, but it's gonna be rattling around it. All right, what are we doing? Put this box in. So here's the box. Let's go. I wonder if I should put this. I wonder if I should put this on first. So it sits like that. You see, it's like in the engine. They have yeah. that track there. And then... Yeah. It's probably easier to put this on first. Okay, so let's put this back in place first. Okay, that's on. Gotta make sure this stays out of the way, this stays out of the way. Let's just put that up there for now. Awesome. I, that's why I always love dine-in intakes. They're always so so darn dramatic. You know, there's so much going on here. It's a 
whole lot of work to get installed, but man, looks awesome. That thing's clamped on nicely. Our mass airflow sensor's in. Okay, side A. And put our snorkel on. So it says it slides in side. So the show it says with the air box completely installed, insert the down and snorkel is shown in the figure 60. And slide the base towards the center of the car as shown in 61. So it kind of starts out here and then goes over. So now that's in. Which way does this go? Like this? Yep, just like that. Some serious static electricity got there. Little two and a halves. So then these screw into here. side is in. Okay, let's do side B. Nice airflow sensor back in. Do our snorkel. Okay. Okay. So uh, clean these up. Just get our fingerprints off of this. And then we can call it a day. Should we start it up, Bryce? Is it gonna sound so much different? This is the best day ever. Gosh, I'm so pumped. I don't know about all that, but I'm certain that people will let us know that we don't. But I don't know. At this point, I kind of magically get keep getting all these things done, so I might have a little bit of something. I don't know what, but something. Dang, that's sick. Why didn't we do this months ago? Look at Look at our floor over there, man. It's like nothing left. That'll be fixed tomorrow. I'm never, I'm never doing this again. Mark my words. Where I go. Too big, too many projects. Not enough, not enough Maddie. All right, people, that's a wrap. Uh, it's 4 o'clock. We started at 11, so 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hours.
probably could have taken four if we would have worked a little worked a little harder. Probably take two if I had this video to follow. <laughs> so, considering this, I guess is probably the first M5 dine-in install video. But man, it looks great. Yeah. So if nobody buys this thing for uh, a reasonable price, then uh, I guess I'll just keep it. Looks good. Should have done this a long time ago. Anyway, we'll have uh, probably an M5 wrap-up video and uh, maybe a wrap-up driving video. And uh, this will be the last you'll see of it. So unless somebody makes me an offer uh, before uh, the end of this video and uh, the car leaves, uh, I'll, I'll do a couple of more videos of it. But anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Should we, should we turn it on? No one can say we didn't turn it on. I hear a lot of injectors ticking and sound a little different when driving, but yeah. Yeah. Different. Looks cool as hell that. That's all that matters. I told Matt, if looking cool is horsepower, this car would have a lot of horsepower with that intake.